Yes. Okay, we are on. So welcome back to uh, our third session of the Ode Chronicles. I am once again joined by uh, Sarah Moore, Micro, and Hello. Miko Mikoyeski. That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Fucked it up again. I mean, I screwed it up again. <laughs> uh -oh. um, edit, edit. Um, so we are here <laughs> to talk about... <laughs> Nutrition uh, and the events of race day. And um, I know last time when we were here with you guys, we started to dive a little bit into nutrition and I, I cut you guys off before we could get too in depth with it. Mm. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna just get right into it. You guys are doing good? Sarah's eating again. <laughs> 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 we said we're talking about nutrition and Sarah's eating. Mike's got a beer. Yeah, speaking of nutrition, so yeah, I'm feeling left out. I'm gonna have to go grab a cupcake or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So um I guess we'll kind of just do we'll dive into a very broad question and and you guys can answer this how you feel fit, because it is super broad, but uh the first question that I had got sent to me um, by another runner was, is there a specific diet you follow during your training? And what is the rationale for your diet plan if you do follow something specific? Or do you- Wait, like a diet leading up to the race or during? <laughs> diet leading up to. So during training, are you guys doing anything? Oh, hell no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you just Diet sounds everything? awful. <laughs> Diet sounds like boring. Like okay, you have to uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how else to say diet, but um, specific food plan for your training. Are you, you know, are you? I think that's a question for Miko because I are think you he's keeping track of what you're eating while you're training. Or are you just eating? I'm just the eating. only the only reason I would keep track is if my jeans are getting too tight. Okay. And then I'll start to track my calories and be like, all right, I shouldn't drink that much beer. All right. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but my issue isn't like what I eat, it's how much I need to eat. Okay. Like, so are you, are you, five meals a day some days. Okay. I never have that. I've never had that problem since I was born. About not, <laughs> no. no, I have the opposite problem. So I've had to cut back. But. <laughs> Are Miko, are you are you tracking your calories like during your training and then how much you need to replace at the end of the day, or are you just kind of eating by feel? How are you I feeling? Eat by feel. And it's normally, like I said, I eat a lot. Okay. Like, I get to work and I have three or four meals at work. Like breakfast, then three meals at work, and then I come home and have dinner. Okay. How is a you? meal like a meal or is it just you snack all day? Because I like to snack all day. I don't like to have big meals. I like okay. to, like, graze. They're snacks, but they're pretty substantial. Like 500-calorie snacks? or Yeah, probably. Okay, yeah. Mike, are you, tra are you tracking anything while you're training? No, no. I mean, That's one of the benefits, right? A log in a lot of miles is you get that benefit. I, I guess the one thing I would say, though, is depending on, like, when you're doing your run. So if you're doing your run early in the morning, watching what you eat, that night before may be important, you know, a oh, bunch okay. of spicy food or fried food or heavy veggies, you know, you, you can easily end up with some GI issues for an early morning run the next morning. So okay. maybe that's the only thing I'm watching if I've got a longer run, you know, super early the next morning. But Okay. Has anybody um, played around with um, fat, uh, fat adapting, like with keto diet or anything like that? No. no. I feel like I'm fat adapted just because I have it. <laughs> I'm adapted to the fat I have. <laughs> I don't really know if that is I what you start, start twitching a little bit when you ask that question. Right. I hate that. I hate that. Well, I, think it's I think it's clear with the three of us that we all three run to eat and we don't eat to run. You know? Like, <laughs> We're a bunch of jokers. That was, that was going to be one of my questions. I'm glad you covered that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So how about, um, so if you guys haven't played around with the diets, at least, 
Um, there was some talk. Tad had mentioned to me that some of the some of the runners this year had done caffeine tapering. Maggie did. Who did? At a uh, big last year. Oh, okay. Did you guys have? Did you any of you guys try it this year, or for I've, any of your runs in the past? No. Okay. Yeah, I have. You've tried it, Miko. Yeah, normally two weeks out from our big race, I'll do oh no caffeine week. Okay. So you just, is it a straight like cut off? You go from drinking caffeine to the next day, the beginning of your two weeks, you're like done? Yeah, like Sunday morning, I'll have something before my long run. Okay. And then that's it until Saturday. Okay. Do you feel like it made any difference? Um, Maybe. I get some, like the first couple days are kind of cranky and probably not pleasant to be around, but... I think it yep. does help. Okay. But for me, I don't drink like tons of caffeine. I have a cup or two of tea a day, like in the morning, and that's oh, it. Oh, okay. So I don't, I'm not a caffeine like a holic or do like the crazy pre workouts or anything. Okay. Did you ever have any issues when you reintroduced caffeine during the race? Like any no. any GI issues or anything like that? No. No, because the week of the race, I'm back on caffeine. Oh, okay. So you introduced the race. Five, six days, yeah. Okay. Not just the day of. No. Okay, that makes better sense. Because I was trying to think about how that worked. Like, that would probably, it could introduce some issues if you just all of a sudden, you know, started doing the caffeine shots and stuff, like in the middle of the race. And that was your first time having it for a couple weeks. <laughs> so yeah. I wasn't sure how that worked. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't do anything through the training piece, but for the race itself, I tried to hold off on caffeine as long as I could. So I didn't take okay. my first caffeine in the race until maybe three or four in the morning. You know, that was the. It was probably oh. it was about three o'clock. So like that's the only thing I did was to try to hold off as long as possible until I really needed to have it. Okay. What um what kind of products are you guys using for caffeine? Is it shot gels or goos or I mean I know Mike I remember you said you did like a lot of gels and stuff didn't you? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I would take ones that did not have caffeine. Pretty much for caffeine, I started about three o'clock in the morning and I would do Coke, uh, Coca Cola. Okay. I did that for a couple hours and then took like an hour or two off. I I even did one Red Bull. Um, so like throughout the race, um, I had probably four, eight ounce Cokes and one Red Bull. That was, uh, all the caffeine I had. Okay. All right. Sarah, how about you? What, what kind of, did you do caffeine during the ode or, and when oh, did yeah. you introduce, when did you introduce it? I don't know if I did it strategically, but I love iced tea and especially when it's really hot. A Snapple in the middle of the hot part of the day, and it's got tons of sugar. Yeah, just the spot. But um, <clears throat> as far as other caffeine, I have. A, I do Huma. I don't do Goo because those taste awful. <laughs> and um, but Huma's really good. Out. Oh no, you're a Goo fan. Birthday cake. And you're amazing. from Ohio. Oh, well, the chocolate, what is it, like chocolate explosion or something? That... I'm, I'm telling you, birthday <sighs> cake. Birthday cake is amazing. You got to try it. My first goo experience was in a half marathon. It was hot. And it was vanilla bean. And it was god awful. Vanilla is <laughs> bad. But I burped it up for miles, so I will never get over my goo trauma. I still have, like, PTSD thinking about it. But Huma is, like, a natural – it's, like, real food blended up. It's, like, a mini smoothie, and it's got – Oh, okay. I don't know if you've heard of them, but I, I swear by Huma. So – like like, I have never done it, but the, app, the apple cinnamon Humas on oh, top. Yes. Oh, yes. They're like an apple pie. Oh, yes. I have to write that down because I want to check those out. Huma is good if you need like it's a hundred calorie shot, but it's better than goo. And okay. uh, a friend of mine introduced it to me, and there's this one that has like uh, electrolytes in it too. And then there's um, a mocha cafe, whatever coffee flavor. It's really good. 
Okay. Is it liquid? Like it's a no. It, it, it's like a goo, but not as horrific. Okay. <laughs> yeah, another popular one is spring. Um, yeah. uh, spring energy gels. It's more like real food rather than like goo or cliff shot type of jar. You know, type okay. of gel. But spring's pretty popular too. Okay. Yeah. What the other ones? Science and sport, or sport and science. S I S. I think is the name of it. It's pretty good. Oh, it's I don't know if this is true, but I heard that Huma was from Michigan. That's why I kind of. Was oh, nice. Huh? If that is true. I Let's think be, I might stay local. I might be right, but I might not be, so don't quote me. <laughs> okay, we'll find out. I'll, I'll Google it at some point. Um, so uh, Tad came up with this question, actually. So, and you guys are you guys already answered it a little bit. Um, he asked if in training, do you track your calorie intake and output to understand how much you can absorb? Um, and you guys already kind of said, no, not really. But did, yeah, do, you, do you track it during the race? Oh, yeah, a little bit. Not not probably as scientifically as Tad would because Tad's, like, on his game. But well, Explain to me maybe. how you would track how well it absorbs, how you absorb. Well, I have no idea, but I just try to track okay. how much I'm taking in just so that I know I'm getting at least a certain amount of calories. I think if you get down to, like, all of your macros and break that down, then you can really hone in on it and get better at it. But okay. that's like next, le next level stuff. You know, I'm not quite there yet. I need a coach or something or Tad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, during, during nice. training, yeah, during training, I'm not tracking normal food, but I would on long runs, I do track like what I eat during that long run or how many calories I take in more. Oh just to try to prepare for the race to say, Hey, on my long run, I only took 150 calories per hour and I didn't feel like I had quite the energy. So, you know, next training run, I'd bump that up and say, okay, maybe I tried 250 or 300. So it was more, you know, where did you feel pretty good on a training run? Mm -hmm. So that way, when you get into the race, you know, Hey, are you a person that wants to target only 150 calories an hour or something mm -hmm. higher up to 350 you know so you, i think you got to have some idea what you're trying to target per hour to have a game plan for the race okay yeah I don't, my training is just whatever i do whatever i eat for long runs and i think mike kind of hit it really you don't want more than three 350 calories an hour that's oh, about I'm like 200 to three i think yeah that's what i'll shoot for is two to three hundred an hour during a race okay too much is overkill then yeah. you'd be getting mm -hmm. having stomach issues i think you can kind of feel too like yeah. it is it gets to be a job to eat like it gets to the point where you don't want to but you know you're a machine you're, you need your oil you need to keep it going in order for you to keep going so you just take it sometimes i'm just it's easier to get that pre-chewed stuff so like the go-gurts and the yeah apple yeah. sauces those things you just don't even think you just swallow it sucks because you I like eating normally. Yeah, I think those are some of the mistakes I feel like I made during the race where I was so picky. I'm like, what do I really want to feel like? And listening to some <clears throat> podcasts and people talk afterwards is you can't think of it as food during a race. It is this is the fuel. I need these many calories and you just gotta put it down. You know, where right. I feel like I spent, especially the later parts of the race, saying, Do I really feel like a rice krispie tree? Do I feel like this? <laughs> where I just this, wish someone would have. This feels like where my place. college training came into play. Yeah. Like, this jug. <laughs> we all didn't have the buffet at Sarah's tent. Like, they had a whole table of options. And I think there were three or four <laughs> types of cake there. You're not lying. Nice. <laughs> so, I guess, I guess that moves us into the next one. Mm. So, what kind of foods do you find you prefer during race day? So if Sarah had a buffet, what's always on your buffet line? I had a smorgasbord. <laughs> yeah. And um, this is where you really should have Andrew step in, but um, he's already planning out, you know, the next um, buffet, shall we say. Okay. But my go-tos, I think, so during the day and the first day, I would go for, like, sandwiches and stuff that's normal, uh, a wrap, those little Hawaiian bun things you ever had those that come in like a little square thing yeah like cuts the out. he he cuts those out and he like cuts little squares inside of them to dig out some of the bread so that you can pack more 
goodness inside of the sandwich. So like you can put in peanut butter and jelly and then you have like an extra square um, hole to, you know, fill in yeah. the bottom and on the top, he, you know, carves out a little hole on the top to put in the jelly and then you got more inside. And then he also does like this borsen and cheese and turkey and cucumber. Oh, so, good. so like just having something maybe for lunch to look forward to is really cool. And then it's less like a little British tea sandy because yeah, you know, like a Welsh muffin that likes to prepare little cute sandwiches. And then it's not like this huge dry bread that you're like, oh, I can't get this down because it's so awful. Yeah. And then after that, you have like dinner time is kind of, this depends how you're feeling and the heat. So if it's too hot, maybe you go to like a smoothie or soup. Soup comes in handy. That's usually later in the night. And I can't even tell you, like I told him buy Progresso, buy the can of soup and dump it in a pot and we're good. He goes and he makes his own homemade broth. He gets the freaking udon noodles and he pre-cuts them so that I don't have to like worry about slurping. It's so cute. Like he goes, I, I can't even tell you how essential he is to just overall success. You guys are all gonna lose because you don't have Andrew in your back pocket. I'm sorry. Yeah, so you have you have trail chef making you like fingers. He's freaking Gordon Ramsay, I'm serious. <laughs> Uh, and I don't even know why, because I didn't even ask for it. He just wants to go to this level. Yeah. Um, and yeah. rice pudding, he makes this special rice pudding that um, can be good, hot or cold, but depends on what time of day it is again. Like maybe you don't want it hot because it's too hot. Yeah. Still the night, it's nice when it's warm and soupy. Oh um, my God. <laughs> so my, sometimes my you point. want sweet, sometimes you want salty, and then you just kind of figure out what you're craving. And, I wasn't expecting like that <laughs> formal of like meals. I yeah, was you thinking, like grab and go, you know. I, I, I should show you pictures of him preparing like the week leading up. It is a whole production. It's insane. Yep. My fueling plan was slightly different than Sarah's. <laughs> um I went the first, I'm looking at my notes here. I went the first 14 hours of the race with no real food. So I did all. all no real food? Calories, no food until after 14. that 14. Wow. That the first. So I, I did tailwind and, and some, and goose up to that point. Um, and then I, after 14 hours, I had a turkey and cheese and a tortilla roll up and then went back to tailwind at that point. Uh, basically, I put in throughout the race three oatmeal cream pies, one Ensure shake, you know, so it's like a 450 calorie shake, four small Cokes, one Red Bull, uh, a few Pringles, a Cliff Bar, and two Rice Krispies. So, but mostly it was liquid <laughs> calories. That was it. That was it for the whole race. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I could eat that at like one meal. <laughs> <laughs> and you were constantly running like that's that's nuts to me yeah but wow. I like the liquid, liquid calories for me were you were you super hungry the next day <laughs> like, yeah. i'm curious like i've never done tailwind and i'm i even bought some because i'm a little nervous but um so everyone's you, doing yeah. it so i i never did it sarah until maggie did it at big so i read her report and how much she used it and that was the first time i bought it um, and I've been, like, what if you don't like it? What if it tastes awful and you can't get it down? And well, I, I would, I would advise you to not try it for the first time at Big's backyard when you run that. Okay. I would say you should do that in a training run first. <laughs> I'm bringing it as a backup just cause I'm like, everyone else is doing it peer pressure. <laughs> I mean, as a as a backup, like if you need the calories, like my my backup is like that insured drink because it's a it's a relatively small bottle. It's like four hundred and fifty calories. So like my plan is always I try not I don't love the taste of them. So it's only when I feel like hey I haven't got enough calories in the past like two hours. So let me try to chug a four hundred calorie drink and catch up a little bit. So I ended up taking one of those kind of mid morning type of deal, but. Um, yeah. Wow. So you did not have real food until it, like after 14. And yeah, you've never yeah. run a trail before. Like, oh my gosh, this is insane to me. I can't even imagine. Is this, when you run marathons, Mike, are you eating anything? Are you 
you're just drinking water. You're not doing anything at all for marathons. I'm, I mean, you forget we only run for three hours and 20 minutes in a marathon. So yeah. I, it's a couple, it's a couple glasses of Gatorade at the stations. And I take <laughs> like, I think three, I typically have about three goos out on the course, but yeah. Oh, Ew. Yeah. All right, Miko, what did you eat? I hope it was not a snack. I'm somewhere in between, apparently, because I had... You had a piece of pizza, I saw you. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. I don't remember what hour it was, like five or six. Um, who was there? Claudia was in Matt's tent, and like we came, we're headed out. She's like, do you guys want burgers when we come back? We're like, yes. <laughs> but we came back, and like there was a burger sitting on each of our seats ready to go, like all made up the way we wanted. Nice. So, like, I was doing tailwind. I was having protein bars. I was sticking to two to three hundred calories of whatever I was eating, whether it was gummies. I don't do gels. I agree with Sarah; they're nasty. Um, the only one Power Bar used to make a good one, and I was addicted to those. And then they stopped making them. So, oh. anybody do like those the honey wafers or stinger I'm waffles? Yeah, just, just getting into them. Love those. Okay. Those are pretty tasty. Are good. Yeah. But... Basically like a cookie, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah my, my... And instead of goo or instead of huma, the yogurt, applesauce. Okay. Because I like the, the goos are like all sugar. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the yogurts are, have a lot of sugar too, like 14 grams, but they also have four grams of protein. So yeah. if you're trying to like balance it all out, which I think I need a, a balanced meal, like all of that and stuff when I looked at the packaging it's just straight up carbs and yep. uh, 200 calories of sugar and sodium so I take salt tabs so I don't need the sodium I guess and then I don't know how my stomach would do with sugar I just haven't done it I mean maybe yeah. if I was sponsored I would try it but <laughs> when you're drinking those tailwinds does it taste super sweet like you're just drinking a bottle I've never of tried it so oh. my <laughs> Try a little bit in a like just a pint glass of water. Like it, I don't know which flavor you got, but I drew the naked one, and it's just like a little sweet taste to it. There's not okay. like an overpowering. Naked one? Yeah, it, it's yeah. The naked's like not supposed to have a flavor. I I, I typically uh -oh. take the berry, and again, it, it's a powder, so it's it's as sweet and as strong as you want to mix it, right? So you know, I would I would use a sixteen to twenty ounce soft flask, and I would put. You know, I started the race with 300 calories, so I was doing three scoops of the tailwind, and it's pretty sweet. Like it, it's a little hard when it gets hot out because then it feels really sweet. Like I was talking to yeah. Tom and some of the other guys that that made it 100 miles, and they're like, when I was telling them I was doing three scoops, and they're like, yeah, we only do one. We do 100 calories in 20 ounces. So, oh. um, you know, I think you you just figure out what works for you. To me, I'd rather if I can stomach the sweetness and get 300 calories in in one bottle and not have to deal with other food and potential stomach issues, I'd rather do that. I pre-mix mine in a gallon water jug with like the 20 scoops or something in there. So like, I know that's 2000 calories and I drank that whole bottle. So, and then I had real food on top of that, like pizza, burgers. Yeah. And then I don't have the same setup like Sarah, the, you know, the personal chef. I think, I, you know, I'm so worried, like I'm missing the boat, but then I think maybe everyone else is missing the boat. Yeah. What I know. What, what I really want to try, I get tired of paying, you know, a goo is a buck or whatever. You know, Greg Armstrong, the big ultra runner, he, he uses, I think, high fructose corn syrup. You know, he buys a whole bottle. And like a dollar. squirt bottle? Yeah, like he, he legit uses that. And um, My one you know, friend, I got to give a shout out to Ron, my friend we call Pooh Bear. He'll bring a whole jar of honey and just squirt it into his mouth mid-run. Yeah. Same maple thing. Is another good one. Really good. I've heard like maple maple syrup and stuff like that too. Yeah. yeah. And I've heard of people like doing Iditarod, like the run in Alaska, and they were carrying like bottles of olive oil because oh. per gram it is the highest calorie food you can find. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, I would think olive oil, like since it's all fat though, it's not going to be like instant energy. You, not like the carbs and the sugar. Yeah. 
So, but yeah, it is. Well, when you're on a five or six day, it'll, it'll help keep things moving along. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm wondering, though, like the aftermath, Mike, of your tailwind uh, consumption. Like, what is that like? Yeah, was it, it like was a cold? Oh, <laughs> Talk about the spicy meal before your long run in the morning, but I'm more <laughs> worried about 24 hours of tailwind. Woo. It was good. You'll have to you'll have to ask Maggie next weekend what uh 48 hours of tailwind is like. I'm gonna ask her. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to to talk to you again and see what other people were doing at that race. If I mean, hopefully you're you probably won't really know because you're gonna be busy <laughs> running, but you know your crew is gonna be able to look around and see what see what else is going on, and it's gonna be interesting to see. So, yeah, definitely a lot of a lot of things to learn, and I think the moral of the story is everyone's got to do what's right for them. Or yeah, if right. if it works for you, don't mess it up. As long as you can get the calories in and keep moving, yeah, you've got that determination. It, it really doesn't matter what form it is, if it's liquid or solid. So let's let's talk uh, real quick because you mentioned the salt tab, Sarah. Um, I remember our first ode, um, I think there was, I think it was a girl who was way behind on, on hydration and electrolytes and stuff and ended up having to like get an IV and everything because of severe muscle cramping. So how, what are you guys doing to replace electrolytes? Are you keeping, do you have some some method like i mean you know, taking x amount of salt tabs every couple hours or like how, how are, you, are you weighing yourself how are you tracking that to make sure that you're not behind i've been in some races where they actually weigh you um, yeah midway like 75 miles in or something or a couple times through but uh i don't do that typically um unless it's required um i i stick with the salt tab once a hour usually if it's super hot okay uh, if it's not maybe an hour and a half you can kind of feel when you're dipping um i don't know about you guys but i get like kind of heavy eyelid uh eyelids and so i can feel like almost sleepy and then as soon as i get a salt tab i'm, I'm awake again um <laughs> so sometimes it's just becoming in tune with your body and knowing um what what will perk you up and what this symptom of whatever you're showing needs a fix for. I don't know. The salt is usually when I'm tired, feeling sleepy. Are you, are you replacing just salt or are you replacing other electrolytes with a drink, uh, you know, adding to water or anything like that? No, I don't do other electrolytes because the salt tap has like a combination of potassium and oh, electrolytes wow. in it it's not just sodium so okay. it kind of it, if you're really dipping then maybe double up but okay why is i get most of my nutrition to food okay how about you guys um Mike well, i'm not the both. same like i just do what when i feel like i need something i'll take it i need a oh, salt okay. stick this year wasn't bad so it wasn't hot it was pretty cool actually throughout the night so didn't really yeah. need much and through the tailwind and some of the other gels and protein bars, or I have salt and everything in there. So it's just my okay. natural strategy takes care of it. Yeah, I guess I'd say I'm on the other side where like Sarah and Chris are very experienced long runners. Um, you know, with this being my first ultra, like this stuff is all new to me. Like how do you balance the water and how do you balance the salt? And that's right. one of the reasons I went really heavy with Tailwind because part of their product talks about, hey, we build this product to be the right balance of all you need to be able to, you know, have the energy for 24 hours. And so I kind of trusted the product more than trusting myself because I don't know as a new runner when I need a salt tab and when I don't. And so that type of stuff was really confusing to me. So I thought being heavy liquid calories and relying on Tailwind to do it for me. Um, I feel like that worked for me in my first race. And so for newer runners, something like that might work. My biggest worry was getting an, getting enough liquids in. I felt like that's the one thing that I could try to control. So, you know, I, I at least had it in my mind that, you know, I wanted to 
have to use the restroom at least every three hours. I felt like if I was going longer than three hours without having to make a pit stop, I probably needed more fluid in and try to judge it that way. But again, I'm, I'm not as experienced uh, as Miko and Sarah on, on judging. Well, Mike, you things. sound like the poster boy for Tailwind if I ever knew yeah. one. Well, when you go run, when we're, you, not, we're not promoting any specific product here. But. So whether it's Tailwind or any other product, but when you go run with Maggie next weekend, she works at Tailwind. See if you can hook me up. Okay? I will. I would be like, you should talk to this guy. I'm feeling like like Mike should just crew Sarah be on Sarah yeah. so he can go get all this huh. information for us. That's right. Maybe you can tag, tag me in and tag me out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh. So, um, when you're, are you guys, well, I know Sarah is like always training for something and I think Miko is always training for something too, <laughs> but, and, and Mike, I don't know if you have something that you're training for all the time either, but when you guys aren't training for something, are you adapting, you know, your, your intake or are you just continuing to eat like you would normally eat like do you have to like watch that you don't eat too much after you're done with an event when you're kind of just in hangout mode or you're probably still eating like a ultra athlete I say week after a race, I'm eating everything. I don't know if you guys are the same, like okay. rebuilding, recovering. And like throughout the year, I'll take normally in December, like about three weeks, like I'm going cut like back to almost no running. And that I'll still eat the same and, you know, maybe a little bit less towards the end. But okay. then I pick right back up and I'm back going. Okay. Same for you guys or? Yeah, Mike's shaking his head. <laughs> well, like the day after, yeah, definitely. Maybe not the week after because I feel like it doesn't carry over that far. Maybe a day. Okay. Well, um, and here, another question from Tad. So, does your amazingly hardworking crew, if you guys had a crew, give you advice regarding nutrition and how much do you actually listen to their advice? So like one time, um, first ode, uh, it was like four or 5 p.m. It's so hot. It, it like spiked 20 degrees hotter. And Andrew's trying to shove a hot dog in my face in between loops. Like I took one bite and it just tasted like gravel. I just puked it right out. Or I didn't puke it, I just spat it out. I just couldn't get it down. So yes and no. I, I try to eat when they tell me to, but... I kind of know that it's my job to eat, like um, we were talking about, just taking it in because you have to, not because you are trying to be picky or, you know, selective. It's just get whatever you can in. But um, mostly the, the crew is just trying to find what is going to go down. So they're oh, just offering wow. up anything. <laughs> like, here, eat this, eat yeah, this, yeah. eat this, and you'll say yes to one of them. Okay. If you yeah. have a good crew, they're just going to shove food in your face and... Yeah, their job is to push food at you, and but the way I say it is, I need everything and I need nothing. Yeah, <laughs> they just keep pushing, and it's like, don't be overly pushy. Just give me options, and when I hear something I like, I'm gonna eat it. Okay. And then, yeah. my, you didn't say, did you? No, I, my brother was there. Oh, that's right, me. your brother. Um, yeah, so I mean, he he was great. You know, pushing the stuff. I think it. Where, where you see the switch is kind of that early morning the next day. Like I, once you hit close to 24 hours, like at least me, my brain just was not working where like earlier in the race, it was much easier for me to be like, yeah, I kind of feel like this, get me this, you know, Hey, when I come in next loop, I think I'm going to want this. Once you get into 20, 24, pushing over 24 hours, like you, you just don't have the energy to think about those type of things. And you got to rely on your crew just to put those things in your face and make you eat them. Right. Cause the yeah. little bit of energy you have left to think you want to be thinking about the course and how do you finish that next loop? Okay. Yeah. Well, considering that was your first ultra, your first trail ultra, and the fact that you hadn't had solid food in 14 hours of the first 14 hours, I think next year you're going to, or actually November, you're gonna have a much different experience. 
Like your brain functioning is going to last a lot longer. I think you're just going to. Are you, are you still doing it, by the way? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm still on the fence. I've got a race, as Sarah said, in November. Um, I, I'm still on the fence. It's like six weeks away. I'm not quite as in good a shape as I was for Odalaz, but I think to your point, you learn so much in experience every time you do want something like this or take on 100 miles that that'll carry you much further. So we'll mm -hmm. see. Is it a backyard style, Mike, or is, or is it yeah. just they're all trial? It's backyard style? Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's another backyard uh, down in southern Ohio. Oh, cool. Yeah. You'll have to keep us posted on if you do it or not and how it goes. Me and Sarah are going to crew is what I heard. Oh, nice. <laughs> Here, oh, that would be fun. <laughs> Here, I'll tell you. What we if Sarah, if when, not if, when Sarah hits 200 miles at Biggs, I'll go ahead and make sure I'm in in my race in November to see if I can match her. I'll take that. Oh, deal. I like that. I like a little friendly competition there. That's all. I'll I even do. bring my freaking special Hawaiian buns and udon noodles <laughs> down. You're not fired. <laughs> they have to bring your chef, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so I think. I think that kind of covers our nutrition. Did, did you guys have anything else to add that we didn't cover or that it kind of just so? Oh, I have one. Yeah, what? The, one thing I think is really important or it works for me is having a uh, structured day. So I know like a lunch or a dinner or a midnight snack or a fourth meal, Taco Bell-ish. Having something that is going to give you a reason to go that next few hours, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, so what Tad did year one and what he had aimed to do uh, again, and bless his heart, you know, with everything else going on. <clears throat> so no worries about this year, Tad. But um, the first year, which was a total surprise, he comes up on lap 23 and he's like, what do you want? I don't even know this guy. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, if you could have anything... Anything at all, what would you want right now? And my go to is Cherry Garcia. Uh -huh. ben James. And when I got back after the 24th lap, and all of a sudden somebody hands me exact, like I didn't even think he heard me. I, I just kind of, you know, mumbled it. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I have this delicious cold ice cream in my hand. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> the best day in the world. It's like Christmas. And so having like little um, treats, little things to look forward to, I think can really incentivize you to go the distance. Uh, so if you're on a point to point race and you know at this point you're gonna meet your crew or at this point you're gonna, whatever, having something to look forward to is, is really important. So maybe have your, your, your traditional snacks or your you know, go-to fuel, but then after 24 hours, this is what I'm gonna get to look forward to or after my 200, I'm going to get this. And so yeah. that's, uh, I don't know, something to like dream about or start getting your, you know, palette wet for while you're yeah. out there. That's a cool. I, I like that. <laughs> I can I can relate to that too because I I kind of feel that way when I'm hiking like I'm just basically hiking from one meal to the next yeah <laughs> and like if you have drop bags on the way to each meal you like plant little things in your drop bag that you're gonna be like Ooh, I can't wait to see that right yeah I can understand that it it creates an interesting relationship with food that I'm not sure is completely healthy, but it works, right? Did you guys ever read Laz's comments about how he got like his LazCon across the U.S.? What he was talking about, I could, I was like going so I could get my Dr. Pepper at the end of the day. I was walking, whatever it was, so many miles before I could have a cigarette and all this, and that was like his incentive. Yeah, it was a pretty I'll good post he wrote. I'll have to read that because yeah, it does. It kind of create it. I don't know if it's if it's really all that mentally healthy, but, but you yeah. gotta create like little mini goals. Yeah, so it, you can't it, look at it in like one in total. Yeah. That's, and that's what else much. are you gonna do during a race other than run and eat? <laughs> There's something else. You know what I mean? It's not like you can you know prop your feet up and watch like a couple episodes of your favorite show or something in between time. You gotta have their the reward. You know. Okay, so we're going to go into race day. 
and I just want to know overall how you guys felt, uh, how you felt your performance went. Were you happy with it? Were Was there anything that you wish you would have changed? Just give me an overall feel. How was your feel after at the end? So we'll start with Miko. Um, my feel is I'm happy with it. I wish my foot wouldn't have given out for something stupid and hindsight, you know, tr I should have tried to do something earlier on trying to get, make it better than just think I could survive on it. But again, race brain wasn't thinking and it is what it is. So overall, I'm happy. It was a good day. Was that your first, uh, oh, you know, hundred mile accomplishment? Or yeah. had you, yeah, okay. So that's a huge thing. Yeah. Mike? Yeah, so I spent a lot of time preparing for this race mentally, like trying to read stuff from Laz on how you got to think about it, where you can't think about a miles, you got to think about winning. You know, that can be the only thing in your mind. And as much as I try to tell myself I was doing that, I have to admit, like, I was ecstatic when I crossed the 100 mile mark. Like, that was to me a huge thing. And so, like, I was, I was happy that I continued past that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I am disappointed that I quit when I did because I, I didn't have an injury like Miko where I didn't have a foot problem. Like I was tired, I was sore and I felt like I, you know, I felt like I couldn't go anymore, you know, but then two hours later, you're like, shit, I could have went one more hour, you know, like, could I have gone more? I mean, I really felt like I left it all out there when I, when I did, you know, a couple hours later, I felt like, man, could I have given a little bit more, but that's what makes this race so fun. It, it is such a mental drain and you challenge yourself mentally because those last couple laps, I was like, there's no way I'm finishing this lap. And then I finished them and started the next one. It's, it is just such a mental drain and, and it's going to take, you know, a couple races to, to practice that and get over it. So I'm I mean, obviously I'm ecstatic getting 112 miles. I was super pumped to go over a hundred, um, but you always want more. You know? Yeah. Do you feel like, you know, if your goal, you know, you, you definitely wanted to reach the 100 mile mark. That was one of your goals. Do you feel like once you got there, you still wanted to win, but do you feel like mentally it was, I got my goal. Now the rest is just gravy. Like, do, like sometimes, I mean, I, I'm trying to explain it. Like sometimes if I know I'm going out for 20 miles at mile 18, I am dragging it, you know, just yeah. knowing that I'm going to be done soon. So it, the same yeah, thing be if I know I'm just going to go out for five miles. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, when you're getting to the end of what your goal was, mm -hmm. your body, your brain just tells your body like I'm about done. Yeah. So I, I think there, there's a, a slight distinction that my goal was not a hundred miles. I mean, I, I feel like mentally I was there that my goal is to win this race. Okay. But I, I would have been very disappointed if I would have left that race not crossing 100 miles. So there, even though it wasn't my goal to beat 100 miles, I knew once I crossed the 100 mile mark, I would not be disappointed in the race. You know, gotcha. and so figuring okay. out how, how do I mentally stop thinking like that and only think about winning, you know, like that's where you're right. mentally you have to be there and that can be all you think about in order to push yourself there. So, you know, I felt good that I wasn't just saying, hey, my goal is 100. I, I just knew you know, I would be disappointed if I had to drive back to Columbus that next day and I had not hit at least a hundred miles. Right. And Sarah, overall, I mean, I'm sure you're happy. <laughs> I think, um, I, I do have a couple regrets though. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think overall the race went, um, really well as far as how I felt during, um, I feel bad for how I treated my husband during the transition. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh -oh. Uh-oh. You might have to tell this story. <laughs> I, I don't know. But uh, we are still married, so there's <laughs> that. <laughs> Somehow. Um, it was a rough seven-minute transition. <laughs> and I am so glad there was no recording of what I was saying from the back of the van while I was trying to change and he's curving through these, you know, park roads. Was this your um, 
fishing from the trail loop to the road loop? Yeah, so from uh, between 11 and 12, because of the delay, it was, it was between 11 and 12, uh, we had to move from our uh, starting spot to the, you know, traditional start stop location, which timing wise, it was fine. It actually gave me an incentive to go pretty hard and like push that last loop. And I had given myself enough cushion. I, I wasn't worried about time. Um, but some of the things that I thought we had ironed out that were going to play out didn't happen as I had imagined. And, you know, when you're tired and you just got off the trail and you've been in the heat and you're you know, giving it your all, and then all of a sudden your stuff's not where you expect it to be, and then you're just, you know, mm, should <laughs> shut up, but you don't <laughs> because you're so exhausted. So thankfully he sees past all that, and he still loves me somehow. But um, that would be one thing I would change, but that's, you know, you know, we weathered that storm, so there's that. Yeah. Um, then I think I wish I had um, – I wish I had dialed in a little bit better with, with Mike and Nico at the end and not kind of, I think I got too competitive or scared even. Like I, I was intimidated by um, by the guys and being like a, you know, defending champion. I got to like, you know, show up and ready to play. And all of a sudden these guys are going to come take me out. You know, you have a little bit of fear. And I kind of regret um, not bonding more with you guys during the race and, and, we could have gone farther, I think, if I had done that. So if anything, I'd go back and I would try harder to get Mike to keep going because I would have known that he had more left. My, Miko, you know, your injury, you can't really do much about that. I, f I feel your pain. I was there um, in April when I did the uh, virtual race and I had an injury that stopped me in my tracks. And I know that I couldn't have gone another lap. I mean, I was crying <laughs> the last three that I had done and I didn't want to risk, you know, permanent damage. So I think you're smart. It's hard to sometimes swallow that it's not your day or that it's something beyond your control is going to stop you. But um, I think, I think Mike and I could have gone farther if I had, if I had not let my ego or my fear control me and the, the wanting to win so bad that I wanted to dust my opponent um I feel like I should have gone back and made it last a little longer. It, it's funny, Sarah. I've thought a lot about that as well post-race. And I wondered how different it potentially would have been if this was not a golden ticket race. I mean, I think you want to win no matter what. But the fact that there was the golden ticket on the line, I, you know, I, I wondered in my mind if, if there wasn't that automatic entry in, you know, would it have been a little bit differently? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm I think that's why I'm so excited about um, the team aspect of bigs this year is because we're not dog eat dog. We're not trying to like cut each other's throats out. We want each other to last as long as we all can last as a team. The depth is important. And yeah. I, I almost like, it gives me chills. Like I am so pumped for that. I, I want the team to, to win. I would much prefer that than an individual victory hands down and it means so much more to do it together than alone that last lap is just boring and and really kind of weird anyway you just you want everyone else there it's like and then you finish and there's no one it's just kind of a weird race because you're you're in it together for so long and then it's down to one and yeah i guess in the end the victory isn't even that i mean it's special in a way but the journey was so much better but the rest of it was all what it's about yeah, we, we ran one style of race, Sarah, and then the last two or three hours on the road, that's when I tried to throw some intimidation in on you, and then you threw the intimidation on, a meet, and tri on the trail. But, but to your point, right, like how different was that race? The Because when you start to think about it, that was six hours, five out of six hours was that way, where I'm trying to intimidate you a little bit, you're trying to intimidate me. If we would have not done that, and yeah. we would have just ran together you know, like how many more hours could, could we have pushed each other? You know, I, I definitely think it, it could have been different if it wasn't for the, the golden ticket. Yeah. So it, it, and like Laz says in his, um, like the, the whole style of racing, you, you quit when you don't think you can win. You think you're outmatched. Mm -hmm. And um, shoot, I felt that a lot, like where I, I thought, you know, I should quit now because I am outmatched and, 
these guys have more experience than me. Um, why am I even bothering wasting my cruise time? And uh, I don't know. It's it's funny when when you change the rules, you change the way you play. And I don't know. I think I think though from this experience, no matter what, I don't know. Maybe he's, maybe I have just different perspective now. But I, I definitely want to go for the collective win next time rather than my own personal. So. I like, I like that. Did it feel, um, you know, I know, Mike, you didn't do the old last year or the first year that um, that we held it, but did it feel different, Sarah, because it was the golden ticket and Miko compared to the year before? Was there... Everything was different because it's 2020. <laughs> well, other than, yeah. all the co other than all the changes because of COVID and everything. I mean, that obviously, but yeah, I mean, a little bit. I think, but also because it was delayed and then we weren't sure it was going to happen and there were just so many, so many unknowns. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like last year too, we had packed up a lot from the start because there was more of us. So I think there was the same eight or nine of us in the front of the pack last year for like all of the trail loops. Like, yeah. And I think the first five or six, we were in the same order at the start, like as soon as we got into single track filing in and it just became our thing. And just, we had those great conversations and this year was kind of weird because it was, we were split up. It wasn't the whole group. Everybody was everywhere. Yeah. And then when we got to the road, we were just kind of, everybody's doing their own thing. I wouldn't make fun of Matt until like the dark. And then I wanted to make sure he knew it was me. So I said something mean to him and <laughs> we, we did story time. It was the whole thing. Oh. So yeah, was there less was there less smack talking this year then? Oh, or there's always smack talking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it was more virtual than in, in real life. So uh, okay. it was all, all on the uh the group Facebook group leading oh, up. No. Okay. <laughs> so it wasn't you talking smack to runners while you were going. It was all it was all like the camaraderie between the, the family, I guess. Okay. All right. It, it, it was it's not against crew against crew or what? <laughs> we haven't gotten that far. <laughs> so yeah. were, were there any runners this year um, that caught your eye as being especially strong that maybe you didn't notice last year or anyone that you'll be keeping it like out. Ohio, period. <laughs> all the Ohio people. All of Ohio. Well, we're the order here. It that? was it was fun to play uh, hang on Sloopy pretty late in that race when half the people left were Ohio for everyone. <laughs> so yeah, so who you weren't part of the Ohio group, Mike. You didn't know any of those other guys, right? No, so they're what um, Tom, Josh, and Cecil are all like kind of friends, family. The three of them all came together. Uh -huh. We all started at Oak together uh, with Miko. Um, so I started chatting with them guys a little bit there. And uh, Cecil dropped at 75 miles. And uh -huh. then uh, Tom and Josh went on to do the 100 miles. So the three of them all knew each other. Um, but but I did not know them before the race at all. Okay. Um, what about Abby? She's awesome. Is she going to be back next year? <laughs> I hope so, because she's yeah. a rock star. Okay. Cause then, I, really, I, I like, really think she could have gone farther. Um, I, I, she also didn't have a crew, and, yeah, you know, we would uh, definitely, you know, take her on. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why she didn't say anything. Like, like come be part of the family. Come hang out. Yeah, I think I think next year she's going to be someone to definitely keep an eye on too if she comes next year, which I hope which I think she's going to. I think Tad already told me that she signed up for it. So um so I also yeah. think depending well how we'll see how things play out, but uh there's a few others like Shannon and Lauren. There's some new new rising stars that I think are getting the taste for ultra that okay. especially females so i'm just saying there's a lot of girls feeling the power and yeah, yeah. their titles and uh, jeopardy next year is what you're saying <laughs> i mean i'm not i'm not worried about the title i just i just want to see how far we can go 
Yeah. Let's put, let's put all on the books for some big numbers. Yeah. I, I, I like this idea of the, um, of group effort versus, yeah. you know. We can um, go farther together than we can alone. So. Yeah. It, that, it would oh. be interesting to see if, if that's. Like, I love that Germany just posted a video of the top, their entire team is going to make it 200. It's like what they're, they're threatening. That's their like, goal. They're all going to go the 200 mark. Like, how cool would that be if you had 15 people go that far? Yeah. You're going to, like, be bonded for life after that. Oh, yeah. Together. And going through that. If you can all make it there. I mean, there's so many unknowns and so many things that could come up, but. I can't even imagine. Go the war. I can't imagine running that same lap over and over up to 200 miles. <laughs> well, it's not the same lap. It's the same uh, lap for 12 uh, hours, and then it's the same. You know, die of boredom. I don't know. It's, it is a mental. That is mental. All we'll the bring way. some music. We'll get the, uh, oh, it'll be a different scene. So, you're, so while we're talking about, like, you know, running as a group, interacting with each other and everything, is it part of your strategy to run with other people and does it become, does it change over the course of the race? Uh, as far as strategizing goes, like Mike, you were saying, you were kind of trying to psych Sarah out a little bit. Is, is part of that, you know, breaking off and doing your own thing or? Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on where you're at in the race, right? So, I mean, I, right. I run, I mean, for me, I, I really did not run a ton with all the other runners because, one, I just wasn't experienced. I haven't done this before. I trained a certain way. And so in my mind, I'm like, you know, I got these goals to win this race or at least get past 100 miles. I felt like I wanted to stay the pace that I knew I wanted to stay. You know, like when we ran the trail route, you know, Chris, uh, Miko was, was at Oak with me. You know, Miko was at the front of the pack the entire time. I was one of the last people to finish just about all the time at Oak. Um, just because that was the pace I was comfortable with running. Um, you know, I, I walked the hill backwards. I was the only guy doing that. Um, you know, and, and I do all my training by myself. You know, I log 15 to 2,000 miles a year, and every single one of those miles is by myself. Like, I, I'm not used to running with another person, so it's a little weird. As we got on, Sarah eventually made me start talking to, to her and all the other okay. people. You know, she's, I think it was about the 16th or 17th loop. She's like, oh, wait, are you the Mike Rowe that's been talking trash on Facebook? And so we started <laughs> chatting more at that point. But, um, you know, I mean, what we can talk I about. I thought you were just this, like, like socially awkward, mask wearing, didn't want to touch people. Like, I get it. We're in a pandemic. But I was like, oh, he, this guy doesn't like people. <laughs> and then you're like, no, not the case. You know, I was just so nervous that you start chatting with someone and next thing you know, you put out a loop that's, you know, three minutes faster than you wanted to and you bomb your race there. And so I was so me mentally prepared to run the race I wanted to run at the paces I wanted to that, you know, I was really just locked into that. And, um, you know, it wasn't until do that. it wasn't until later on the road loops that I realized, you know, how much fun this is in the community. And, you know, to, to I get think yourself you kind of went all fast at night, didn't you? You were like leading. You were way ahead. Well, I mean that's a relative term, way ahead. I mean I think <laughs> we can talk about the end, the last couple of road loops where I purposely did that because I'm like I know I can't beat these people on the trail, so I got to see if I can intimidate them and get them to drop right now on the road. But oh. you had, you intimidated me from the beginning of the night. I thought you were like some uh, unknown. Yeah, like I I had no idea what what you were bringing to the table and you were pounding out those night loops. And I was like, Phew. well, and, and some of the strategy is just different. Right. So like I, part of my strategy when I, I didn't eat a ton of real food, but when I did, it was more on the night loop, but rather than doing it back at camp, what I typically would do is run the night loop a little bit faster. And then I would walk, the last half mile in and I would eat then trying to give my stomach even more time to digest that food, you know, okay. that little bit extra time. So that was my strategy. So I typically was faster on the lo road loop and then I would walk the last half mile, three quarter mile in while I'm eating a Rice Krispie treat. Here comes Sarah catching back up and passing me, you know, going in all except for the last couple loops on the road. Where I meters is all downhill though. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a nice walk. Yeah. 
Oh. A rice crispy treat. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> What's next, Twinkies? <laughs> I, I didn't have any twink oatmeal cream pies and rice crispy treats. Those are my go tos. Oatmeal cream pies and bomb. I can see why you like those. <laughs> um, so do you like the trail or the road better? <laughs> Obviously, the road. <laughs> the <trail> okay. <laughs> I mean, the Nico trail is fun. Sarah? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, you you start to hate the trail, and then you get to the road, and then you start to hate the road. So I don't know. Both have their horrible parts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm all trail. I love that trail. I wish we would have done lap 12 on that trail in the middle of the night. That would have been awesome. Oh, man. Did you guys yeah, have headlamps. headlamps at a certain point on trail at all, or was it like... Oh, so this is my favorite part about the Ode. Um, at night, I don't wear a light. Because you oh, don't, yeah. you sort of need it, because Tad will beep at you if you don't have it on the early parts of the night. But when it's, when the park is closed, when there's no traffic, you don't need it. Like, you can let the stars guide you, you can let the moonlight guide you, and you can go completely lightless. I had, so I had, don't worry, Sarah, I had you covered on the light at night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you did. You were a little bit like light. a Christmas tree. <laughs> 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 and like he was strobing out, making me want to see. It was so bad. I was That's like, like this is obnoxious. Oh I my God. That. We're Did not we running a, a major highway. We're running a park road. Oh. That's a full arm thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Again, the mental games, just trying to make people mad. I had this flashing light. It worked! Oh, I, I knew it was making people so mad. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just mad it wasn't going to my music. All right. <laughs> so, were you allowed to use headphones? Well, I brought a speaker, a little portable speaker. So, this is where the whole baby shark thing came up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I brought this little thing I threw in my backpack, and I was like, hey, guys, I'm taking requests. Like, making a nightclub. Why not? This is it. it oh, okay, yeah. It, it puts out. So um, I was queuing up the tunes and trying to, like, you know, get people to make, be friends with me because I want to be like, <laughs> I don't know. I was like, okay, I'll play your song, Mr. Ohio Boy. Tell me what you want to listen to. <laughs> and then they would give me the request and then they would be like sweet and then I'd turn on like country or something and they'd be like oh shoot let's get away from her so, <laughs> it, it you know won me some friends and then if I wanted them to go away I'd switch on what I wanted <laughs> <laughs> so so what happened with baby shark who requested the baby shark that would be Miko and I forget why he had already had a few requests so yeah. I was like trying to like let other people Get their songs played. It, it so goes back to personal. We don't even listen to dueling banjos. So. <laughs> I had some great ideas. It goes back to World's Toughest last year because one of the penalty loops, they had all of those songs playing for us, like Baby Shark, uh, The Wheels on the Bus, the Barney song, just so you'd spend like a quarter mile running them, like full volume speakers <laughs> just there, so... And everybody hated it. And I'd like cruise by and I wouldn't have to do that little quarter mile loop. And I'd be like cruising down the course to baby shark. Dude. And like everybody would be like, shut up. <laughs> it was a tactic, but it didn't, it didn't work. So I wasn't going to play it. So that's no. where <laughs> She's mean. You refused it. So it was not played. It's not. I, I told him he should have uh, kept going and we would have played it. Well, nice. you know, next year Miko might be carrying his own speaker. <laughs> Dueling speakers instead of dueling banjos. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. <clears throat> you know what the song about dueling banjos is? <laughs> What's wrong? Have you song? heard the song Dueling Banjos? No. I thought you just meant in general, like... No, and it's like... Know. You know song. this. Song. Oh, <laughs> it. Ready? This is what we listen to on Miko's Request. Can you hear? No. Hold on. Before.
I can't hear it. Oh, apparently two speakers don't like each other. <laughs> really? What? I can hear what? like little snippets of it. Everyone can realize what dueling banjos is like, and you wonder why I didn't want to run with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's two banjos playing, right? Like it's, it, it like builds eventually, but oh, it's pretty bad. It's so bad. So I wasn't about to play Baby Shark after that. Sorry, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> oh, <man>. Next. <laughs> Well, uh, we already talked about who do, who would you say talked the best smack this year? If you had to give an award to the best smack talker, mm. and were are there any uh, any clean examples of the smack talk? I think Mike Mike gets my vote because he's the one talking about the flies on Tuesday <laughs> or Wednesday. <laughs> That I don't think there was that much smack talk. I, I feel like the smack talk Sarah's referring to is we were all talking about how far we would go just on the Facebook group. It was that anytime somebody would say something, we'd be like, oh, we didn't, we weren't worried about Sunday. We're worried about Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday oh, or yeah. whatever the day is. But yeah, during the race there wasn't a whole lot. But yeah, the Facebook kind Matt of or or Matt Matt and Tineo. I was yeah. gonna say last year. Like Matt to like hurry up and grab his purse or something. Like there was some, there was some good smack being talked between you and him. Like, <clears throat> oh man, Matt plays the mind games like the best of them. So yeah, he definitely uh he can weasel his way in. But I love that guy. <laughs> so if for next year, um, if they have to do uh, the same type of changes for, you know, social distancing and all that stuff, if they have to do the staggered or the different start lines and stuff, um, do you have any any feedback on how how that went? Any um, any things that you could think of improving it other than just not doing it, period? <laughs> yeah, yes, Sarah. How can we do transition better? <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> I think I don't. I think that it'll be different next year because people with the intent of going beyond twelve hours. Well, I think that most of those there, there's just not everyone wants to go beyond twelve hours. So um, non delay, non rain delay day, you can do your race and not have to worry about transition. Okay. So most people won't have to worry about it. I guess if there is a lot of people going beyond the 12 and wanting to transition, maybe there's <clears throat> some sort of incentives or I don't know. I don't know how to make it better. It's, it, it is a little bit of an obstacle, but in the same vein, it's like everything out there is. So it's just kind of adds a little flavor to it. So I know I know we kind of stressed about it and we, we talked about our plan and it didn't actually go to plan. It actually blew up in our face and then it was a complete, you know, poop show. But um, <laughs> in the end, it's kind of a memory and we kind of laugh about it. And if it's all smooth and rosy, you don't really remember it. It's not. So, yeah. so I don't have the experience from year one when we didn't have the split start, but what I would say is, you know, it, it does create, you know, some difficulty around the transition, but from my purpose, being a single track trail, like I can't, like we were backed up even in our very small group in certain sections because of, you know, All little right. crick crossings or things like that. I can't imagine having a hundred people and that the bottleneck that that would create so to have people spread out where they can run a little bit more of their the pace that they want to on those first trail loops i think there's a lot of benefit to that i, I thought i thought ted had a great idea where he didn't penalize you for a late start um the reality is like look if you start lap 13 a little bit late you know, the road loop is not that difficult. If you can't get back in time still, you probably weren't going to be able to do real well in, in in that race for much longer. So I think the way he did it where he said, you know, I didn't, I wasn't one that was there at the very start of, I guess for us, it was a little different. It was lap, you know, lap, I guess it was still lap 12 that we started there. It just was only, 
Traditionally, it would be 13. It, yeah, good, for the that's what it is. Yeah, so, like, I miss the start, you know, because of the transition. Like, I'm running up, but he's he just – everyone come to the start line whenever you get here and you start. I started probably 20 mm -hmm. seconds after the group went, uh -huh. um, you know, and you can make that up easy on the road loop. So, I, I actually kind of liked it as much of the – you know, kind of cluster it was for your crew. I think if anything, it's most stressful for your crew. Like I know my brother was like, holy cow, this is crazy because they would not, you know, Tad would not allow the crew to go set up early. You know, my plan when we were talking about it was like, hey, I'm, I don't need you for my last loop in the trail. You go get camp set up at the new location, you know what I mean? And then come pick me up to take me there. But they kept the gate closed. So I think maybe we could work through that transition a little bit better to let people go ahead and set up their camp, you know, earlier to kind of get their spot. So that's not as frantic for the crew, but um, you know, besides Sarah telling us at lap 16, she may be divorced and doesn't know it yet for everybody else. I don't think it was as terrible. What was the rationale for not letting the crew set up early? Was it just, Oh, I think the difference was that he didn't have the cabins. Uh, he didn't own them because the delay of the race day he didn't get the cabins until like two or something or wherever the timing was it was it was due to the rental and the re oh, reservations okay. of the park okay. and so that okay. won't be an issue normally because gotcha. he'll have it for all weekend and you know people will already be starting there so there okay. will already be a campsite or a crew there right people set up okay. and then also, I think a lot more people transitioned because we had the rain delay and they wanted to get that 50. So they needed that one more lap and then they were done. Right. So that added right. some chaos. Well, I, I don't know, Sarah, because I'm looking at only two people made the transition and then stopped at 50. I mean, granted, it's a COVID year, so we're that way down. Yeah, the but then numbers, some people so... think they're only going to do one more lap and get their 50, and then they realize that they can keep going. Yeah. And then they get curious. So most yeah. people maybe set out for 50 and then they're hungrier or they taste like, oh, maybe I'll go one more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what, let's see. I wanted to ask. Did that. Oh, so um, was there a point during this race? Like, Miko, you said you were kind of struggling with your foot for quite a few laps. Um, was there... At what point did you say, okay, this is my last lap, or did or did it just happen spontaneously that you finished it and you're like, I just, I can't do it again? Or were you thinking, I need to get these last couple and then I'll, then I can be done and rest my foot and stuff? I kept trying to get as many laps as I could in there. Um one of the last one I did, though, was, like, I saw Mike. We were probably, what, about two and a half? I don't think we were quite to mile three yet. And he's like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm like, okay, well, I at least got to make it because we got to get Sarah out there for another lap at least. So that yeah. was, like, my thinking is, like, get in. As I got in across the finish line, it just – that was it. Like, yeah, I, I was forcing another lap was my whole goal at that point. Okay. And – yeah, I just called it. Yeah, Mike, how about you? Did you you said you 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 let left it all out out of there? What when you started that final lap? Did you know that was going to be your final lap, or or did it happen afterwards? Yeah, so like as Miko said, we had, we were kind of chatting as we were running, so that would have been twenty six. You know, I didn't feel great at that point. Went back out for, you know, did twenty seven. I mean, for me. It, the stairway to heaven just kicked my butt, man. Like that was what my was favorite in my head. Like, I, I honestly <laughs> feel like that's why I quit. I'm like, I cannot go up those darn stairs one more time. I'm like, the rest of the trail I was pretty good with. I mean, there was funny. There, there's one section of the trail. I don't know if you guys remember where I'm talking about, but you can't. It's a hill that's like three feet tall, but you go up it kind of sideways. It's kind of awkward footing. You kind of have to step up to your right. And, it, you know, so it's not like you're going straight up it. It's this hill that's to your right that you go oh, up. So and outside of the loop? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and, like, those last two laps, 
like it took me like five times to get up that that little three foot hill. I kept sliding back down it, and I'm like, "What am I doing?" You know, and um, it wasn't even muddy. I was gonna no. say it wasn't. It didn't rain or anything. No, but it just you know the tiredness, and you're kind of laughing out there. It's you know you get it is such a mental when you're you know and we there are definitely before, some technical parts of that trail that like piss you off. Yeah. yeah, you know, it, it is easy until it's not like that's what this race is all about. And, and it's amazing. It, and if you look through like people's times, it, I mean, it's so common where it's like everybody has these pretty equal splits, you know, whoever it was, maybe if you're Sarah, your splits are like 50 minutes, almost always, you know, but other people, it's like, okay, 52 minutes sp splits. And then there's the very last lap is like 57. And then they're done. I mean, it's like, it's so easy. And then you have one bad lap and you're out. And so, yeah. you know, to be able to get over that mental hump to say, you know, maybe it's okay to have a bad lap or two, but to, you know, keep going after it, it it's so hard. And, you know, again, I think just the more you can get experiences like this and running these things, it, the mental game is it, just so tough. You got to build that up. And no matter how much you try to prepare for it, I feel like I did. I try to talk myself up a ton, you know, yeah. until you get in it and experience it, you, you don't, you don't know what it's like. Yeah. I remember, I think Tad told my last year, uh, my last lap, I think Tad had told my husband, who was my crew, like if she comes in and she doesn't and she has less than five minutes, like this is gonna be the last lap. Because after that, it's just gonna I'm gonna have no break and I'm not gonna be able to get anything in. And it was a, it was absolutely true. I was done after that. Um, it just you know as soon as the that time just kept getting closer and closer to the hour mark, you know. But uh, but it, it was interesting to to look at your guys' times. And see how very consistent you were for the majority of the race. Um, I, I found that impressive that your your times really didn't change all that much when you guys came into the finish line. And they were so close to one another, especially the three of you guys. Um, so I, I just found that interesting. Where some people you would see, you know, a couple of people that I was watching too. It was like, oh, they came in, a, you know, a couple minutes earlier and but they didn't end up going you know as far so it i don't know i don't know if the timing makes much of a difference if you guys think you know how much rest time you have like if you only had a few minutes what do you think you'd be able to keep going or i think it's a mental game for sure because when you're used to having 10 minutes eight minutes whatever it is if you're coming right. in consistently at this time now now you're rushed, now you're frantic, now you're kind of scrambling and fumbling. Um, so that can play with your head and, and then you got to go back out there and maybe you don't have everything that you thought you wanted or were planning on having. <clears throat> and then you're just like, you know, beating yourself up because you're, you're slowing down. So you're thinking you're naturally going to slow down and slow down and slow down. You got to right. find a way to like separate all that and dig out and say, okay, that was a bad lap. I can do this again. But again, it's just combination of that fatigue that build up in the you know gradual you know breaking down or yeah and that's where you can rely on your crew too if you come in probably do about four minutes be like the shortest i probably feel comfortable with like you get to your tent you do what you got to do and they just like start handing you things and loading up your vest and be like here go and you turn back around and go to the start line right Right, so it's a lot of relying on them just to move the you. thinking for you. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was a huge mistake on my side. I'm, you know, I was going from running consistent 52 minute laps to the, my last couple ones were like 58, and it's just that flustering of like, holy cow, I don't have time. Where if I would have better prepared for that, it's you know, I came across the line, it's like 58. I'm like, okay, I don't really have time to go back to, like my camp was set up a little further away from the start line. So I'm like, I got to just kind of stay here. But my, you know, my crew was like, well, what do I get you? And all my stuff's back there. I'm like, I needed to be better to be like, okay, it's okay to be a little short for a couple hours. Like you just need to have a couple things for me here at the start line so I can pack my vest and be ready to go. And, right. you know, I, I probably wasn't as prepared for that, like frantic, cutting it closer than I had wanted to, um, where maybe next time I hope I can do better at that. Okay. Yeah. Well, Before guys fitting is really like something that you have to get used to, right? If you run like any other looped race, like for me doing, um, 
I won't pit my first three laps. I will do three straight laps. I'll meet my crew and they'll resupply me at the start line. But until like this one where you're forced to have that break, it makes it a new challenge. Okay. So yeah, Miko, you're not going back to your, your tent then at all for a little while. No. Okay. Sarah, do you go back every time? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say with the buffet, how could you not? But I mean, it's more for the the spiritual boost. Yeah, I think um, the break is more about like fueling off of your crew, and then the yeah, you got this, come on, and then you're like yeah, yeah, yeah. That otherwise, like energy. Why else would you go back out there? Yeah, if someone would tell me to do what I do. Otherwise, I'm like yeah, I want to go home and be with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> it was boring. So if is there anything, any kind of overall uh, you know, major point that you guys learned during this race that you're gonna take to the next event? Um, or you know, the one thing that you would tweak, uh, whether it was, you know, nutrition or strategy or maybe you realized you needed to do something different in your training. Is there anything, any any big takeaways that you're going to uh, adapt for your next race? Miko, any yeah. um, Mine is just having, like, crew who's more experienced. Okay. It was just because on short notice, like, my normal crew who would come out who I don't have to think about anything. It just, I get back and it's, stuff happens. You know, short notice, they couldn't be there. So luckily, I was able to get a bunch of friends. And for a few hours, there was a gap where I was just kind of crewing myself. Um, yeah, that's it. Just somebody who knows a little bit more. And now I have three new people who have crewed for me. So they can – Yeah, I have that confidence in them now. Yeah. I think for me, it's I, I spent a lot of time trying to prepare and map out the race as I want it to go. And so, like, I felt really good about that strategy. I'm like, I want to run 52-minute la laps. I want to eat 300 calories an hour. I want to switch my shoes when I go from the trail to the road. Mm -hmm. I want to eat real food at this point. I want to take caffeine at this point. Like, I, I think I did a good job mentally preparing for all the things that I want to happen. Mm -hmm. What I didn't really prepare for is when all that stuff goes wrong. <laughs> you know, like, what, what do you do when all of a sudden you turn a 58-minute loop? You know what I mean? Because I, I feel like I got to prepare. It's okay to run a 58 minute loop, but you got to do it this way. And, you know, when a foot starts to hurt, how do you deal with that? And so I think I'll try to like mentally prepare for when things go not as planned as, as yeah. well as, you know, just as well as I plan for what I hope happens. And are you going to plan that with your crew? The what ifs? What if I come yeah. in and, and X is wrong or, you know, like, you have to go over that with your crew too, right? A hundred percent. I mean, I think yeah. all three of us have said it a ton through all of these sessions. There's no way we would have got as far as we did without our crew and, and we need them to, to be as prepared as we are. Yeah. Sarah, any big takeaways? Um, I'm just gonna keep telling my husband I love him. He puts up with me when I'm really nasty. Uh, so we can get through that transition. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I think trying to like latch on to people more um, on on the loops, new people that they you know don't know what they're capable of, or um, people that I'm, I'm even scared by because I think I kind of chickened out because I was threatened by or I was worried about losing. Um, but maybe I should look at it differently and look at it as an opportunity to push myself. If, if there is someone that, you know, is going to challenge me and push me past, why not just help them out, too, because then we can both go further. So yeah. I think that's how lessons learned, and I want to see how far Ode can go. So let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Come back, Mike, Miko. I know you're coming back, but <laughs> Mike was like a baby, and so I want to solidify it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a maybe. Are there any questions that you guys had for each other that we have not covered in these sessions? I feel like we've covered a lot, but is there are there anything any burning question that you just had to know about 
one another that we missed. I have a question about you, Libby. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> What's your goal now for uh, Ode 2021? I don't know. I don't have a goal yet. Um, I would like to get... I haven't even... I haven't completed a 50K. So during... Ode is the longest I've run, and I think that was the 28 miles. So I would love to... But so you got the 50K, so we're going to go like 12 hours? <laughs> I heard 50 miles. Is that, is that what you guys heard? You know, I I've heard. Heard 50 miles, I think, would probably be a reasonable goal and an attainable goal. I um, think you got that in the bag, and then it solidifies that you're going to have to, like, hang out for the night portion. And, and you know, well, here's here's a an actual goal that I can attain. If I don't, if I get my mileage, whatever it may be next year's owed, I want to I want to volunteer after I'm done running. So no, I, I know I'm probably not going to make it to the night loops. Let's just be honest. But I've No, I think you would if you wanted it. Not with that attitude. You're not right? Like... See, yeah, I got the wrong attitude. I don't know how much I want it. I guess let's just say that. It's a matter of wanting it. So it's okay if you don't want it. I'm not trying to shame anybody into wanting things they don't want. I just think I'm yeah. the same. If I don't make it to my goal, then what's next? Right. So I like that you have like a plan B like I'm gonna hang out and be part of it and I definitely it's like a win win then so you don't have to worry. A I was bummed this year that I didn't come because COVID scared me away. And I was bummed last year that I didn't come back. Once I went home, all I talked about was like we should go back and, and watch. We should go back and watch. And then we just didn't. And I watched virtually I you know refreshed the Facebook page a million times. Um, but next year for sure, um, I'd like to be part of the night volunteer group. So we'll see how that goes. I'm sure Tim will take me, but, um, but yeah, I, I get, I get bored very easily with, with doing the same thing over and over. So I, I don't know how, how far I'll be able to get, but we'll see. There, there are Maybe. so many runners though, like it's not an over and like, I, th I think it's, again, it's how you frame things, right? It's easy to say it's the same thing over and over, but people have said on this call, like you can run with someone different every single time, every single loop, you can, you can do something different. And yeah. I mean, it's amazing how quickly they can go by when, you know, you, you can kind of shift your mindset. Like I, I'm a huge believer in positive attitude and shifting your mindset and all that mental stuff. Like, yeah, like I, I'm a, I'm a, just a huge believer in it. And I think you can, again, it, whatever distance you want, you know, if you want to go for 30, go for 30. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, how many people can run 30 miles? There's not that many, like, it's right. awesome. Um, you know, I, I think, think knowing people now will make a big difference too. Cause like, I was <laughs> like, Mike, I didn't know, I didn't know anybody when I first, my first year that I went. And I and was not, not a little, like a 30 mile achievement. That's awesome. But I just always am like trying to push people to be like, you think you can do that? Well, if you think you can do that, then I know you can do more because if you yeah, think do you one can do more, more, keep doing yeah. one. More. Keep and doing that's more. what this whole thing is about is like, try a little hard, like, Get to your goal and then and then go beyond it and then you're just like well why do you think i wanted to interview you guys <laughs> i could learn so i was like, like, like hey, there's been so many people at the o that show up with a goal with a number and then yeah. just blow themselves out of the water and then it's just it's so cool to be able to impress yourself when you know you have like i didn't even know what i was capable of showing up to o. It's, you know yeah, it's just yeah. a huge question mark and and we're all just trying to see what we can do yeah. That's why yeah. it's going to be so much different next year, I think. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think there was a point where, you know, we started to get pretty competitive towards the end, but my biggest takeaway always is the the six of us that made it from 75 to 100. I mean, that that's that's 6 hours of us running together. I yeah. think we can all say we all got super close that 6 hours. We all supported each other, you know, a ton through that process. Like 100 is a big number. So, as much as all of us probably wanted to win, we all wanted everybody to get to 100 miles and that was clear. Like that would well, that to me as much as a struggle as those miles can be at the, that hour of the day, 
Like that's yeah. some of the memories I'll never forget. The six of us cheering each other on, so supportive of one another. It, it was where you feel like, man, this is something special right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mike, you just you just know how to put things into words. Real cute. Yeah. <laughs> makes me all teary eyed. I guess that's a great that's a great takeaway to just encourage, you know, people who maybe are watching this who, you know, don't know what the ode is. I mean, I would assume everybody watching this now has some idea, but you know, it's it's not just about coming and trying to win. It's about coming and and meeting new people and just having that family kind of feel and the camaraderie, you, you get something out of that, whether you're running it or not, even if you're volunteering or you're crewing or you're just spectating, um, you know, there's there's something to get out of events like this. What a freaking um, awesome winter hat. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or a mug or a bar. <laughs> yeah. Or a golden ticket, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> Tad, Tad will, Tad will provide. I think we need all the things. All the things. <laughs> so, um, I think we need old pint glasses next year. Pint glasses, yes. That's a great because idea. We have, coffee mugs, we have the hats, like. Yes. I like it. We're going to have to, Tad, you remember that, so. <laughs> I'll a with, right the, with the ode etched into, you know, into the glass, like a fish. I need something to pour the uh, keg into. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that can be like the 50 mile prize and the 100 mile, you get like a beer stein. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> with like we Tad's more work for him. in front of it or something. <laughs> All right, guys, it is getting to be that time where I've kept you too long. And, oh. um, and yeah, I just want to say thank you again for, you know, being willing to do this. And this, we've done it over three sessions. We've almost hit two hours every time. <laughs> and, uh, the time just flies by so fast because I think we had good, good conversation. So, um, I want to. I want you guys to keep me up to date uh, about your next events, Sarah. I'm hoping we can have a conversation, if not before, then at least after. Whenever you're ready, um, <laughs> you let me know. And um, and yeah, I think you know everybody here and everybody watching this is rooting for you and Aww. rooting for Team USA. And I think yeah. you know, I think you're gonna have a ton of fun. I'm very excited that the format changed because I think it's gonna be way more fun. It, uh, yeah, the new yeah. format is definitely gonna yeah. be interesting. I was thinking about the strategy for it for all the teams, and it's like you just can't keep going. Everybody has to be in it to win it. Like yeah, you know, bring your I, energy. You know, you anything's have, possible, right? Yeah, yeah. one lap at a time. You just don't, I mean, we're really counting on Courtney to do well, so please don't, like, make her feel awkward with your girl crush on her. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> I'll try to, like, you know, start off slow, but who knows, you know, after a few hours, I'll like, be a little bit loose with my feel <laughs> <little> friendly. <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm not going to pack my long basketball shorts, so... Oh, kind of want to, like, sure. walk up there with, like, look at me. That would be <laughs> awesome. That would be awesome. But I'm like, I'm not trying to steal your thing. I just love you so much. <laughs> you have to do it on one loop. Please do that. I was thinking about it. But I was like, maybe she'll just think I'm a freak. Walk up there with a Sharpie and ask her to sign them, like, on you. Oh, no. Oh, that's I, got, I, got, I got buffs. Little, like, they double S face masks. So you'd be happy, Mike. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got buffs, USA buffs, so I'm going to get signatures on them. Yeah. Oh, heck <laughs> like yeah. A year back. <laughs> you may find, Sarah, you may find, since nobody knows you, that you are going to be the person they want to talk to. So oh. be, ready, be ready to be, you know, the center of attention because they don't know you. They don't, they know each other. They all run the same races together all the time. So you may be the, the center of attention for this race. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Got to got to hang first. I think I got to earn my street cred, and then then they'll talk. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm, 
I'm hoping that they are just uh, accepting right from the beginning. And I'm sure. I'm sure they're gold. Like, what wanna... ultra runner do you know that isn't, you know, awesome? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we all love the same thing. So we've got yeah. a pretty common foundation to fall back on. And yeah, I mean, yeah. everyone has a different, unique story of why they got into it. And that's kind of cool to talk about for a while. And then from there, you just, I don't know, just, just depends on if they've got like some weird ticks or something that come out like a few hours in, then maybe put some space or like some weird flashing lights. <laughs> <laughs> And then we'll also like, just talk about mm -hmm. talk about what they can't wait to eat when they get home later on. You know, that's always a good, easy, uh, an easy end. <laughs> like, what are you craving right now? Oh God, I can't wait to eat. You know. <laughs> so, all right, guys. I think this. Thank uh, you so much, and appreciate you for putting this together and organizing. Yeah. Yep, thanks. My Libby. pleasure. I've learned a lot and I hope everybody else has learned a lot. And um and yeah, we best be seeing everybody here at the next ode. It'll be the it'll be, it'll be, be the awesome. winner. It'll be the winner ode. Ooh. Right? That's the next one, right? Eight hours, yes. Eight hours in the snow. So my yak track. We expect <laughs> to drive from Ohio in whatever weather. Is there a virtual option? No. No. <laughs> no. So that you can participate on uh, on the trail loop in the snow, because if it wasn't hard enough in the summer. Um, it's yeah. worth it. Come on. Fun. Hey, I had to set that course last year backwards in the snow and try to, like, completely untouched and have to walk the loop backwards and place the signs. Oh, lovely. And it's scary that after so many times of that loop, I can do it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should run it backwards. Change no, he, he told me no, we couldn't do that. I wanted to do it backwards starting for like when we got back off the road. Oh. Well, Ooh. maybe yeah. for the eight Ooh, hours. Arizona. Maybe for the eight hours in the snow, he would he would be cool with that. I just don't know how I feel about finishing on the road little out and back to the gate. That sounds awful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Depending on the conditions. <laughs> The whole road is awful, so. <laughs> All right, guys. Have, Have a good night. Good night. And thanks again, Sarah, for setting up our meeting here. And hopefully in the future, I will learn how to set up my own. Um, but, yeah, we'll talk soon, guys. It's been real. Yep. Bye, guys.